Today we're discussing Marketing Nightmares with Dave Kirpin of Likeable in New York City. Dave is the best-selling author of Likeable Social Media, and we're going to be focusing specifically on some social media gaffes and nightmares that have uh, made him laugh and be thankful that he wasn't the agency on the delivery end to those clients so, or those services. Of course, we're hard at work trying to generate business results, and uh, uh, lots of uh, social media agencies and departments are out there trying to generate business results, but there are a lot of things that can go wrong uh, when you're when you're in in social media and everything is real time and things happen super quickly. Um, one, one one example that comes to mind right away is uh, when the the agency uh, running all of uh, uh, Chrysler's social media accounts. Uh, a representative of the agency uh, uh, tweeted about how much he didn't like Detroit, uh, oh, yeah. where they're based. Yes. And uh, uh, you know there were there were uh, pretty pretty bad uh, uh, ramifications. Uh, Chrysler got some bad press, and uh, they had to let the agency go, and they had to let the employee. Oh, yeah. And then you know on the uh, on the brand side, of course, uh, um, uh, when the GoDaddy uh, CEO Bob Parsons uh, tweeted uh, riding an elephant in, in Africa, uh, you know it showed a lot of insensitivity, and and, and their brand really uh, took a hit hit from that. Um, well, speaking of insensitivity, uh, what was your response to the uh, Super Bowl ads that were put out by uh, Groupon that uh, were supposedly insensitive to the people of Tibet? The Timothy Hutton ads, you probably saw those, it created a big firestorm. And then Christian Portbogowski, who put the ads together, was, was ceremoniously dumped by uh, CEO Andrew Mason prior to the IPO after that entire gap. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was a mistake. I was actually surprised that Groupon was doing a TV spend in the in the first place um, and, and, and a Super Bowl spend. And, you know, if you're going to invest that kind of money, uh, you know, you need to be really super sensitive about, about your brand there. And, uh, yeah, that, that was a mistake for sure. And was it a mistake on the part of Groupon for greenlighting it or Crispin Porter for suggesting it? You know, all, you know, I'm an agency. Yeah. I'm an agency owner, so uh, ultimately, I think um, the accountability lies lies with both, and uh, and and it's a mistake for the brand to green light it. Um, you know, you, you have to have a, a a strong point of view. Agencies are going to have a, a strong point of view. Um, ultimately, you know. It's, 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 it's Groupon's actual brand that's out there, and so th that's where accountability lies. So the, the buck has to stop. But the, aren't the agencies being paid for their you know, trusted advisor capacity? I mean, nobody's got a crystal ball. Yeah. So, but at some point, if you're, you're giving money to an agency, especially a Christian Porter that's a huge, you know, the, 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 supposedly the smartest guys in the room, you would think that they would come to you with something that would would work and not require a public apology. Well, you would, and certainly, uh, you know, if agencies are getting paid a lot, they have to be uh, on, on point, uh, which is why, you know, just getting back to social media, it's it's a real, um, it, it, it's a real challenge, and in, in when things are happening in real time, um, uh, you know, you have to move fast, um, but you have to be super careful about what you tweet and don't tweet, uh, what you share on Facebook and, and, and don't share on Facebook. Well, we have uh, a, 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 what we call a social brand bible that we build with all of our clients. So uh, a, a huge document that talks about the brand personality, the ins and outs, the FAQs, the don'ts and the do's. Um, and that covers absolutely as much as possible with regard to um, everything that could or couldn't happen and be said on, on, on uh, social media platforms. Um, there's still, no matter how big that social brand Bible is, there's still going to be some things that come up that are outside of the realm of what you've planned for. Um, and then at that point, you have to have a really consistent voice and you have to have the ability to, to think quickly and, and represent the brand well. Recently, uh, uh, Twitter uh, hashtags have gone wrong a couple times. Um, uh, McDonald's uh, sponsored a hashtag, uh, McD Stories, and people started sharing a lot of their McD stories that weren't um, such great uh, 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 stories. And the things that, that you might not want to uh, uh, share, uh, have shared about your brand. So you no know, gatekeeper. People can share anything. And so if you're sponsoring a trend on, 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 on Twitter, and there could be lots and lots of folks uh, talking about it, you've got to be super careful about what you're, you know, the, the floodgates opening. Um, How do you do that, though? Well, you know, you, you, I mean, you, you put you, it out there. Yeah, you know, I think you know McDonald's had this issue, and ju just just recently, BlackBerry had the same issue. They sponsored the trend uh, "Go Bold," and people shared a lot of things using the hashtag "Go Bold." about BlackBerry and RIM that weren't the nicest things in the world, like, you know, uh, uh, go bold and build a phone whose battery doesn't die right away, yeah. you know? And, and, and so, you know, 
we're, we're all about transparency and um, I think you, you can't stop those things from being said. What you can do if you're a brand or, or, or social media agency is come armed with responses and resources so that you can have a conversation with anyone and everyone that's talking about your brand. And just by talking with people, you can help to turn them around a little bit. So, you know, imagine if McDonald's had, and this is not easy from a resource standpoint, but let's say they had a thousand people that are, are, are monitoring uh, Twitter and answering people's uh, questions when, when they've got McD stories as a trend. And everyone that's sharing a story gets, gets a, a personal response from somebody representing McDonald's on Twitter that says, sorry you had a bad experience, we hope to make it better next time, here's a gift card for you. Not just the silent Death Star empire. Right. Yeah. And, and just the, 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 the real opportunity with social media is though we can't control the conversation at all, we can control our response. We can can control uh, 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 the resources that we put into it, and we can take potential negatives and really turn them into positives. But the stories that we've seen, they haven't kind of figured out that last step. I, I think you're right. I think that thus far, social media marketing nightmares have been just nightmares. Yes. And the real opportunity is to take those nightmares and turn it into a positive situation where you can actually help to change brand perception by demonstrating how responsive, transparent, and likable a company you are. Dave Carp and likable social media in New York City coming to a town soon near you or a tweet soon near you. Thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for having me.